Hey guys, Cody Warner with Idaho Medical Academy here. We are gonna go over the joint and long bone splinting skill sheet. I have my patient Chris here. Chris is going to have an injury to his right forearm, okay? So this would be something like a test, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I have my BSI or my PPE and that my scene is safe. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to make sure my patient is manually stabilizing the extremity. Whether I do it or my patient does it, which he's doing it right now. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to check CMS. So my uh, circulation, make sure I have a pulse. Yep, I'm gonna check motor. Can you wiggle your fingers? Perfect. And I'm gonna check sensory. Can you feel me touching? Yeah. Perfect. So now I'm gonna go ahead and apply my splint. For something like this, I'm gonna use my SAM splint, okay? So with the SAM splint, I can mold it and shape it to whatever I want. I'm gonna create a little handle for him. I'm gonna kind of start on my own arm because these can be kind of tough. Now, if I place this on his arm and start molding it, it's gonna cause some injury. So I kind of want to shape it to his other extremity. So I'm gonna come over here, make sure we're sizing it good. Looks to be about right. Maybe give him more of a handle. And now I can really kind of mold this a little bit more. Molding it is actually gonna give it more rigidity and stability. So now I'm gonna be very careful without grossly moving his extremity. I'm gonna place that and go ahead and hold that for me, Chris. Perfect. As you can see, if you can see, I have a little bit of a gap here in the splint and this is not providing any stability. You can kind of see there, okay? So this is where I would either take it off and remold it or I can pad it. Okay. For the video time sake, we're going to pretend that that is perfectly aligned to his arm. So he's going to hold it in place. Okay. Now, to stabilize this to his arm, I'm going to use something like a Curlex roll. You guys might have seen Coban, which you might go to as well, or an Ace bandage. The only thing about those is they're constricting. Okay. So if I place that and I make it really tight and I put it around his arm, it's now going to compress and kind of push these bones together and cause pain or we're gonna cut off circulation. So if you're gonna use something like that, do it kind of soft, okay? So I'm gonna place this, I'm wrapping this really, really nice. He's holding that splint in place for me. Nothing crazy here, just nice and soft. Again, I don't have to go until all the Curlex is used. If I have extra, I can cut it and tape it or just tuck it, okay? So with a forearm injury, that is a long bone injury, okay? If I have a long bone injury, I wanna mobilize the joint above and the joint below, okay? So the joint below right here is gonna be his wrist. Now, as you can see, his wrist is immobilized in a position of comfort. I have not splinted his hand straight up or straight down or to the side or this side, it is in a position of comfort, okay? As you can see though, his elbow, the joint above, is not immobilized. If Chris wanted to extend his arm, he could. I do not want him to do that because I don't want to mess up my splint and I don't want to cause further injury. Okay, so now I'm going to immobilize this to his body. We can use our handy dandy triangle bandage. Okay? So with the triangle bandage, we have a triangle. I want to keep the long pieces for slack because I'm going to tie around his body. So I'm going to take that short side. I'm going to tie a knot. Okay, so this knot is going to basically cup his elbow and, pro and provide a sling for me, okay? So with this, kind of very confusing, I take my knot at the top, I'm gonna place it on his tricep, okay? So I have this slack piece out here, I have this slack piece at the bottom. I'm gonna take this one, I'm gonna come up through here, just like that, and go straight back. With the other one, I'm gonna come across his body, because I wanna provide stability to this arm so that he doesn't have to hold it up, okay? So now I can come to the back and tie this knot. I'm gonna have Chris turn around for the video. So when I'm tying my knot, it doesn't have to be anything crazy, but I wanna hold it. I'm gonna tell my patient, go ahead and drop your arm. I wanna hold all the weight. So I should have all the weight, and if not, I'm going to play with the slack. I had to take a little slack out. I'm gonna tie my knot. I'm gonna tie the knot off to the side of his neck I don't want it resting on his actual cervical spine, causing pain and discomfort. So it's gonna come off to the side in this muscly area, okay? Let's go and turn around, and this is great. So now we have the elbow is immobilized, okay? Now I wanna secure this to his body. Again, if Chris wanted to do this, when he's getting off the gurney, onto the gurney, in the ambulance ride, this is gonna be moving and causing pain. 
So we have our sling, and now we're gonna do our swath, okay? So again, something simple as Curlex. I like to start it in my patient's hand and I'll have them hold it. Go ahead and hold on to that, thank you. Go around the elbow. Here's your key part is tucking this elbow. I'm gonna come straight across the back, nothing fancy. Under this arm, I don't wanna take that arm away from him. Uh, and that, that Curlex could slide up over his shoulder. But again, if for some reason we're walking to the ambulance and he decides to trip and fall, at least he has another arm to brace him, okay? Again, nothing fancy, just wrap, wrap, wrap. Doesn't have to be too tight, and now I can just tuck it, okay? Again, most likely I'm gonna tape this to hold it in place. Okay, so now I have stability to the broken extremity with that SAM splint. I have my lower joint immobilized and my upper joint immobilized, and now I have it secured to his body. So the last thing I'm gonna do to make sure that I didn't take away circulation is I'm now going to recheck CMS. Can you feel me touching? Yeah. Can you wiggle your fingers? Okay, I can't check his radial pulse because now I've splinted over it. So I'm going to squeeze on his nail bed and check some capillary refill. Less than two seconds, this splint is gonna work just fine. If you guys have any other questions, go ahead and look us up online. Go to our website, idahomedicalacademy.com or give us a call. Hope this helps, thanks. Thank you.